Hey guys, it's been a while since I've done one of these sort of editorial countdown top 10 type videos. Uh, but the year is uh, starting to, to round out. We're, we're past the summer movie season. And I thought it'd be interesting to, to dive into movies that I think are, are, are pretty underrated throughout this decade. So I'm going to give you my top 10 uh, favorite. And this is completely just my opinion. If, if you don't think these movies are underrated or you think that they're not very good, that's that's cool. But these are my personal top 10 underrated movies of the decade. So let's get into it real quick. Uh, at, at number 10, I have Cloud Atlas, which is a, a behemoth of a movie by the Wachowskis. Um, I, I, I think that the admiration just behind the length and the ambition is worth is worth some praise alone. I think that the, the, the way that it was... Not necessarily critically panned, but it did not get as good reviews as, as I think it should have got. I think it has like a 66 on Rotten Tomatoes and like it's in the 50s on Metacritic. And this movie is just is really, really entertaining. It's also thought provoking. It's also very well made. The special effects are great. The makeup's great. The acting's great. There's just a lot of ambition at hand here. And at a three hour runtime, I don't think it's, it's ever boring. I, it always has my interest. So... Yeah, I have Cloud Atlas at number 10. Hey, let's go into number 9. Number 9, I have an animated movie by Warner Brothers, and that is Storks. I didn't have much, uh, you know, anticipation for this movie when it was coming out. But I mean, my friend Josh, who reviews movies with me, went to go watch it, and we laughed the entire time. And on top of laughing the entire time, because of a very, very funny script, the movie also has a huge amount of heart. Uh, the end of this movie chokes me up every single time. I think that... It makes really good points about parenting, and and on top of that, it is just very funny. It's literally one of the funniest movies of the decade, and the animation's also really good as well. And I, think, I definitely think it should have got better reviews than what it did, and probably should have made even more money than it did. Number eight, I have Seven Psychopaths by Martin McDonough. Uh, this is the movie that his in between movie. You know, he had in Imbru in Bruges, which sort of was a, was a a quiet breakout hit. It got nominated for Oscars. He had Seven Psychopaths. Uh, just sort of went under the radar, didn't make much money. Then he had three billboards outside of Missouri, which made a lot of money. It was nominated for Best Picture. And this in-between movie, Seven Psychopaths, is, is almost as good as his other two movies, I think. It is a little sillier in tone. That doesn't mean that it can't reach that darkness of the other two movies. It, it has a very, very funny script. It's incredibly violent. And it just has really, really likable characters with a unique script and a unique story to tell. I think that more people should watch Seven Psychopaths because I, I absolutely love it. Number seven, I have Mother by Darren Aronofsky. And the reason why, I, I honestly have this higher, but it got pretty decent reviews, but it also got a lot of really, really bad reviews, so particularly from audiences, and there were some critics. Uh, one critic deemed it like the worst movie of the 21st century or whatever. And I just remember watching this movie and, and being completely enthralled in what was happening. I think that it was an incredible uh, cinematic achievement. Uh, cinematography was amazing. The direction was amazing. The acting was amazing. It's just not for everybody, plain and simple. But uh, if, if you want to watch something without a, a straightforward narrative that's completely metaphorical st storytelling, uh, you should give Mother a watch. Number six, I have Sleeping With Other People. Um, there For a little bit, I thought this was becoming a, a cult hit. But I don't think it is. I still don't think it's really caught on. This is a really unique romantic comedy, and uh, led by Allison Brie and J Jason Sudeikis, uh, just two very likable leads. And it delves into to territory that maybe we haven't seen in a lot of romantic comedies. Uh, not necessarily more mature themes, but just more realistic and relatable themes. And I, I really love this movie. Uh, it's I'd say it's in my like top 100 movies of this past decade for now. Maybe not throughout the rest of the year when more movies come out. But right now, this is in my top 100 movies of the decade. I think it's a blast. A lot of people think that the, the end of the movie is a bit of a cheat. I still like it for what it is. Number five, I have Kingsman, The Secret Service. Uh, I know what you think. Caleb, okay, this movie's super popular. It is super popular, but it has like like a 75 on Rotten Tomatoes and like, like a 58 or something like that on Metacritic. So it wasn't that critically praised. It might have made money. It might have a fan base now. But I'm just going through a critical standpoint here. The movie didn't get as good reviews as what I think it should have got. I think this is one of the best action movies of the decade. Maybe even of the 21st century. I love this movie. I think it's almost a flawless action comedy. Really good characters. Uh, really good action. Especially that church scene. 
violence is really good, not too gratuitous. It's just a really fresh take on the spy genre. Sort of mocks the spy genre while also sort of becoming its own spy movie, sort of like those Edgar Wright movies like Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. So yeah, everybody's seen Kingsman. Number four, I have Colossal, which stars Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis. Jason Sudeikis is, is all over this list. Um, th this movie, if, if, if you don't know much about this movie before going in, you might just think that it's a romantic comedy, but it is not. It is not that. It is a, it's a movie about alcoholism, uh, abuse within a relationship, toxic relationships, all that with a monster in the movie, a giant monster and a giant robot. Uh, watch the trailer. I don't want to tell you too much, uh, but just know that there's more, there's more behind what you think is going to happen in this movie. And it, it, it got pretty good reviews. I think it deserved incredible reviews because I love this movie. It is one of my favorite movies of the past 10 years. Number three, I had Bad Times at the El Royale, directed by G Drew Goddard. Or G Goddard. I don't know how to say his last name necessarily. I think this this is the best Tarantino movie in the past oh God, 20 years. And it's not even a Tarantino movie. He, he does Tarantino even better than Tarantino. And... I definitely think it deserved much more praise than the, the sort of lukewarm reception that it got, and it also didn't make much money in the box office. This is a two-hour and 20-minute movie that, that completely enthralls you. Uh, you get invested in the characters. You get invested in its in its sort of uh, non-linear storytelling. It, it sort of goes all over the place, sort of like early Tarantino movies or maybe even later Tarantino movies that don't necessarily capture it that well. But this movie certainly does. It's completely entertaining and also pretty dramatic and, and emotional at times. And it can also be funny and, and violent and scary at times. Number two, I have Super, directed by James Gunn. Uh, super low-budget movie that didn't make like a buck in the box office because it, it got released unrated. Probably because it was borderline NC-17. Uh, just a really interesting take on the superhero genre. Uh, it, it's a movie that maybe wouldn't even fly today uh, because of its very non non PC uh, elements. But uh, it's just the movie that James Gunn wanted to make, and he even said that the movie isn't for everybody. But but for the for the people that it's for, it, it'll really touch them, and it and it does touch me a lot. Uh, it is a very very dark comedy, but it also has an emotional resonance to the core. Uh, that, that truly gets me, especially the ending. Every time it, it gets me, I think that it is a fantastic movie. has like a 50 on Rotten Tomatoes. I, I kind of get it. It's, it's, it's a little too pitch black for some people, but I absolutely adore it. And at number one, I have Nocturnal Animals. Uh, this movie is, is, is a perfect movie to me. I remember watching it the first time and thinking, that was a really cool and interesting movie. Then I just kept thinking about it. Then I watched it a couple more times that week. I was like, this is my favorite movie of this year, which was 2016. Uh, beat out like La La Land and Moonlight and Arrival. Because to me, this is Amy Adams' best performance. It may arguably be Jake Gyllenhaal's best performance. There's just so much here. There's like three layers of storytelling here. And a lot of people find it pretty hollow. But I disagree. I, I completely admire this storytelling element and I do think it has an emotional resonance to the core. It doesn't make you weep or anything like that, but it's it's certainly there. And it's a movie that can be can be frightening at times and and very dramatic at times, all led by an amazing musical score that will, that will haunt you for days. So yeah, that, that's my top ten most underrated movies of the decade. What are some movies that you find to be underrated? There are tons of more underrated movies. I, I made like a list of thirty, but I figured I'd only do ten for the for the sake of of a, of a smaller running time. So leave your comments down below. Hit that subscribe button, and thank you for watching.